morning, viewers. Welcome to NOA River State Dialogue. This is a program of National Orientation Agency, River State. And on this forum, as part of our mandate, government policies, programs, and activities are communicated to citizens and feedback entertained in form of questions, suggestions, and comments. Recall that in the last two episodes, we began on a topic, social media and national development, narrowing it down to fake news and hate speech. Today, we shall be talking about information disorder, and that is misinformation, malinformation, and disinformation. In recent times, people have been so desperate for information, especially amidst the coronavirus pandemic. Information like where did the virus come from? Does it have a cure? How can we stay safe? And in a case like this, information can be a lifesaver if it is true. Now, wrong information doesn't help anyone. It can only make things worse. And with me to take on this topic this morning is the State Director of National Orientation Agency, River State Nigeria, Barista Young Minayo Ayotamuno. You're welcome, sir. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity once again. And I also have here with me Mr. Ellis Ria Dapa. He's the Deputy Director and the Head of Programs, NOA River State. Good morning, viewers, and welcome to our program. You're welcome, sir. Please note that you can start sending in your comments, questions, and suggestions. I'd like to start with you, State Director. Thank you for being here this morning. Now, what is exactly this information disorder? What is, like you said, misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation. What is it? Well, generally, we are talking about all of them fall under information disorder. Okay. Information disorder in the sense that all of them, they are all typologies of information dissemination. Talking about disinformation, that is when you begin to share information to the true the traditional media, that is the print and the electronic. It can also be through the social media, but information that you share with an intent, and I emphasize it with an intent, to cause harm, to cause, to cause um, upsets within a particular social order. That is why we said it is an information disorder. Okay. So that is the number one. So when we talk about this information, when we talk about this information, we're talking about information that seeks to do harm. Ultimately, the intention is to do harm to other parties that are consumers. I can give you an example. For example, when we talk about information dissemination, the one major case that we can think about, bringing it down at the community level, some persons who are not happy with the particular traditional structure could come up with a particular information trying to trying to impugn the reputation of those that are in leadership. Okay. It could be the parliament ruler, it could be the cabinet of the community, giving information to other persons that are not willing to know that they may have gone to some IOC to collect a humongous amount of money. And very definitely, it is not something that is verifiable. They have lied, and in the process of doing that, their interest is to do harm. Their interest is to make sure that they change the governance structure because of their feeling that that governance structure is not favoring them. So ultimately, it is their interest. Then you have the other typology. The other typology has to do with misinformation. Okay. Talking about misinformation is also giving out wrong information. But in this case, there is no intent. The intent is not to do harm. Let me give you an example. When the coronavirus started, the information went around that the coronavirus is not a virus that 
can affect Africans, particularly Nigerians, that there is no way it will come to Nigeria. And people just believe this. If you look at the narratives on community transmission, by the time the country became concerned about community transmission and we went to the field, most people just, the information they give you, wherever you go, the response is that, oh, coronavirus cannot come here. It's not, it's a white man's disease, so it's not for the black man. So things like that are all information, especially in terms of misinformation. Even during the coronavirus, I can still take us back. People said, no, oh, if you drink salt, if you drink salt, that it is an antidote. And so many people believe that if you drink salt, that that is a necessary antidote to the then Ebola virus. And you know the damage this thing causes. Because nobody can really tell you what is. So their intention, most times, is not to do harm. Their intention is to give information. But such information is wrong. And then the third typology, which has to do with malinformation. Malinformation is where which has some semblance of reality. The information they are giving to you has some elements of reality, but now turned in such a way, fabricated in such a way, and modified in such a way to suit a particular interest. And I can also give you an example when we come to malinformation. Malinformation, for example, is when INEC, you know that INEC will definitely print ballot papers. I know we definitely bring the ballot papers. But now you went ahead, as in some other elections, to say that some persons that may be holding political offices, that I know is using their companies to produce ballot papers. So you know that the reality is that there will be an election, and that ballot, ballot papers will be used for such an election. And then you went ahead to discredit I know and discredit the election. You tie those interests to it. So these are areas where we talk about uh, the issue of misinformation, where we talk about the issue of disinformation. Disinformation has even taken a more destructive route in Nigeria. Okay. Until the president went to Poland, there was this issue of, oh, this is a Sudanese double, or this is not the president. They capitalized on some information, some background information that the president at some point had some health challenges and went abroad. They capitalized on the painted it and said there's a Sudanese double. And to the glory of God, they took the president when he went to Poland to say, Yeah, man, it is the real me. Look at me here. Yeah. So that is the extent to which this information can be destructive. Okay. Now, Mr. Ellis, from what the state director has said, is that there's a thin line between misinformation and disinformation. What is that thin line? What is that thin line? So people can understand, you know. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Director. Yes, it's name it. See, the difference, my point, try to say that. When we talk about misinformation, the intention, okay? okay. The difference is the intention. The intention, yeah, intention. Yeah, okay. Yes. We, you, you give out information with, without intent to harm. Oh, that is misinformation. Yes, that's okay. Without intent to harm. Okay. Take, for example, I give you an example. Uh, recently, recently, somebody uh, called me to tell me that the federal government, that the Ministry of Nigerian Affairs, has released the vaccine uh, list of uh, Empower volunteers. Okay. Vaccine. Mm -hmm. They called me. And not just that, I saw it on the social media. They said this release, log in here and, and, that, and that and that. The person called me okay. to find out. Before then, he told me that he has also spread the information. But when I check, by then he called me, I check. Because he called me because he knew that National Authority Agency uh, would be part of this uh, verification of uh, Empower beneficiaries. Okay. So he called me, by then he called me, and I called a staff in Abuja from the Ministry of uh, Material Affairs. Okay. And he told me it's not true. Before then, people have started logging, mm. logging, and when you log in, and somebody, when, when somebody, when somebody called me, you know, you find it. He said, "Oh, before now, I know it's fake because they say put in your number. I, the person puts the number, and they say you are successful. The person who did not even apply, okay. so the person just knew that it was wrong. So the person posting it has the intention to help people so that they can uh, assess their names and uh, start the registration." Okay. The, person, the person has good intention to post it out. 
Okay, that is misinformation. Okay. So if you know that the information is fake, the information is wrong, and you post it out with the intention to harm mm -hmm. or uh, to cause disaffection, okay. among people, to cause confusion, the, then that is like what they are saying this information. I want to take you off on something. Yes. You know, give an example that a friend of yours calls you yeah. to say um, that, that the list, the Bastille list of empower is ours. Yeah. Now, if you say you also made a statement that the person had gone ahead to share it yes. before even calling you. So, what do you think the person should have done? What was the first thing the person should have done? We, when, when, we, when, we, when we see information on the social media, okay. we're talking about social media, okay. we should be careful. Okay. We should not be says to share information mm -hmm. immediately. Okay. Immediately. We should find out whether the information is true. Mm -hmm. One, to find out when you look at any information on social media and if the information looks sensational, be careful. Okay. Go and check. Find out whether where that information was posted is a credible platform. Okay, I want to pick you up on something. The first thing you said for our viewers is that when that information Look, looks what sensational. Okay, so please note it. Okay, yes. Right, when you look to share that, look uh, further. Don't okay. just share it. Okay. Because the information is hiding something. Okay. Okay. Go check whether that platform where you see that information is credible. Okay. Even when that information is credible, the site is credible. Mm -hmm. Also check whether other credible uh, sites okay. or sources. Mm -hmm. Also carry the same information. Okay. Then, for example, if you if you see one news on uh, Punch, mm -hmm. you can you can check there okay. and other credible. Mm -hmm. So because if the information is genuine, other sources, credible sources, will also carry it. And also check the dates that information was published mm -hmm. because we know like what happened during the NSAS in uh, Nigeria recently. People. Carry pictures, videos, things that have happened in other countries, in other clients, mm -hmm. and posted it as if those things happened now. Okay. So, what you do is check the text of those things. Okay. And lastly, you should be able to now maybe uh, find out from an expert. When, what I mean by expert is that if you know that, uh, like, empower. Uh, you let me use paper again. Okay. Find out for somebody in the office if you know anybody. Call and find out this is the information I have. Is it true or false? Of course. Okay. Yeah, that's what we should do. Okay. And I think government also have a, should have a way of also not providing vacuum. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Government okay. should not uh, provide vacuum. When you provide when government provide, or any institution, when, you, when there's a vacuum, People who feed that place with false information, misinformation, and disinformation okay. that will deceive and confuse the people. Mm -hmm. So government should have a, a government should have a, maybe a credible platform. Okay. Or government should be also active on social media. Okay. To also give people information mm -hmm. and counter maybe fake information. Now, uh, State Director Sam, you know we for the last two um, editions we've been talking about. Um, social media and national development, narrowing it down to fake news and hate speech. Now we are talking about misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation. Can you marry all of this? Yes, we can marry all of this. How? Symbolically. Okay. We, one, we are exposed to the same platforms. Okay. Because all of them, they are information. Okay. And two, Talking about fake news and this speech, the news oftentimes comes out of the speeches that have been made, out of events, out of situations that people find themselves. But most symbolically, we also understand, we also understand from what has happened, from the scenario around that this is something that has to actually, that we have to actually tackle. That's talking about fake news and uh, um, and uh, hate speech. Okay. That if these things are not properly handled, if they are not properly handled, either through the media of transmission, okay. or through countering them, or through other apps that are available to us for cross-checking this information, that it can actually 
going to make news, great speech, that these are attitudes or these are activities because they are both processes, they are actions, and they are issues that can actually affect the security of a country if not properly handled. Not just security, the politics of the country, the economy of the country, because the information that we let out, we let out into the international domain or into the domestic arena within the country, within the polity, to a very large extent affects us. Okay. If you look at the sensitivity of it, the Minister of the Minister of Information described it as a time bomb. Mm -hmm. And even the, uh, our Nobel laureate, Willis Schenker, said this would actually be the beginning of the Third World War. And he said, because of fake news, news that our ethnic nationalities today have been turned into ethnic cocoons, their people don't see beyond their ethnic regions. Yeah. So the relationship is that first, they are means of spreading, they are means of, they are typologies of spreading information and that each of them has its own negative impact, if not checked. Yes. Because we are talking about this information. Yes, yes. That is where the threat comes from. Okay. And fake news and hate speech, both of them also have a relationship. The border is very thin. One is the outlet, while the other could be the fact that the immediate place where the one is the channel for ventilating the other. The news is the channel for ventilating the hate speech that may have been made. Okay. Okay. Now, let, I'd like to take in some comments. So many comments are coming in. Um, from Rosemary Abeha, thank you for streaming live with us. She says, um, misinformation is deadlier than Ebola and coronavirus put together. So we should not indulge in it for our nation to grow and for peace to reign supreme. You agree? Yes. That, yes. that is deadlier than Ebola and coronavirus put together. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. Okay. To illustrate it. Okay. Uh, let's look at uh, Rwanda. Okay. The genocide of 1994. Mm -hmm. Where an estimated number of 800,000 persons were killed. Mm -hmm. And they injured. Okay. Estimated number. You know, after the crisis, this is just 100 days of crisis. Mm -hmm. Over 800,000 people were killed. Mm -hmm. And even after that, many more died. Okay. And this was caused by misinformation. Okay. Or disinformation. Mm -hmm. okay. There was uh, a plane crash. And people said, oh, because this Buddha, is this Buddha kill these people? They kill our people and all that. And that. Mm -hmm. Before you know, there was misinformation. There was a speech, mm -hmm. and within 100 days, 100 days, mm -hmm. an estimated number of 800 persons. It's more because yes. after that, yes. they arrested people, people died in cell, and yes. all that. Yes. <laughs> people died. So, how many people did the Ebola came in the world? Ah, okay. So, it's, she's yes, 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 yes. Okay, so we agree with that. Yes. We have also from uh, Mr. Rolle Briggs. He says the tripartite force of fake news hate speech and misinformation can bring down any country economically, socially, and religiously. Therefore, it is important that we say no to these negative forces. Once again, well done to NOA River State Nigeria. We agree with that. That it can affect us economically, socially, religiously, you know, no, you cannot very, affect very, very, very clearly. Okay. Very clearly. I think that is um, with all sense of um, responsibility that he may have made that statement. Okay. If you look at it, even sometimes within feeds, even in that feeds, there are a lot of false information, especially disinformation that is sent out for public consumption. And this can actually affect interfeed dialogue mm -hmm. because that's okay. part of the vision mm -hmm. that we also have that both ways in fact the multiple of ways in the country yeah. that Nigeria is a multi-religious country and that we should live our harmoniously but some persons who want to create some information disorder mm -hmm. capitalize on some of the differences 
magnify them and push them out for public consumption. Mm -hmm. And so those who are not very strong in terms of looking at the books, the holy books, mm -hmm. most often times they just consume such information and before you know, there's a lot of problems. Yeah. The same for tourism. Because if there's any problem, for instance, if the country is unstable, there's no tourist, there's no investor yeah. that wants to come and put this money here. Mm -hmm. Nobody, anybody wants to come and invest, especially external investors. One thing they are counting on is the stability in the country. Okay. I cannot come and put my money, add any money, when I know that there's no stability. Okay. It means that, in fact, it means that I don't know what I'm doing as a businessman. Okay. So that is the first part of the stability. Okay. What they're bringing their heart. Okay, I'll, let's take more. Uh, from Itiagon Echo, she says, every day people are being misinformed in our society. People are being misinformed. We need peace in our country, so misinformation should be minimized. How can we minimize misinformation? How can we minimize misinformation and malinformation? Yes. And uh, we said on this platform that this uh, misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation. Okay. They are just uh, brothers at the same time. Okay. Brothers at the same time. Mm -hmm. And they, they have one similar channel through the conventional media and the social media. Yes. That's yes. Okay. So for us, if we are using the social media, one, we should be patriotic. Okay. If we are patriotic, it will also influence the way we see the issues mm -hmm. on the social media. Yeah. How do we do? When you see any information on the social media, Especially one that maybe attacks an individual or uh, a group or an entity. We should be careful, we should be wary. We should not just go ahead to uh, go ahead to broadcast it. Okay. We should be wary. We talk about some of the ones we should do. We should not be in the body in what you said. Mm -hmm. We should check our facts. Okay. Very well. okay. We should always, always check it. Okay. And just like what I said before. There are rules. Other people, like government, other private people should do. They should give. They should. They should. They should. They should give information to people. They yeah. should provide information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's very important. Yeah. You know, we said okay. something last week. You know, when some a comment came in that uh, you know um, our elected representatives should have constant contact with members of their constituency. Yes, that because that's the way of you know closing the gap, that information gap. <coughs> Do you agree? Yeah, let me just add to this. Okay. Add to what my colleague has said. Huh. There's also the need, the need, there's also in the country the need for social media literacy. Okay. Because as many people that have access to social media facilities, you know it's an all commerce thing. Mm -hmm. There's no major training that is required. Okay. So long as you can operate the iPhone, the Android, mm -hmm. you're already there. So what we expect is that people should be deliberately trained and at least to acquire some social media information. The second thing is that once we receive an information, that goes to the issue of patriotism that is talking about. Okay. We should cultivate the spirit of patriotism in our citizens. Okay. Because if you see an information that is not right, and information that you know could destabilize the country. As a good citizen, for civic education, we are expected at least to take up that challenge, to quickly find out what is the source of that information. Mm -hmm. The third factor that I want to mention is the issue of good governance. Okay. I'm mentioning good governance in the generic sense. Mm -hmm. In the generic sense, governance at the community level. Okay. Now there's community governance. Yes. Governance at the local government level, at the state and at the federal level. Especially just like you mentioned, when people have a sense of alienation from what these levels of governance are doing, and governance is not open. Fortunately, we have open government partnership, what they call OGD. Yeah. Government has also come up with the Freedom of Information Act. And so it is expected that good, this good intention of government that everybody that is operating at the level of government should also buy it. So when you don't make government open, you now create the room for people to carry out sorts of information. Okay. Then the other issues are that there are definitely um, owners of the 
these social media platforms. Okay. Look at the US election. You will discover that Twitter was very, very cautious during the election. That is a form of control that they applied. So the same way they operate the social media, they can also put in place certain apps, certain technical, certain technical uh, applications that can also control the kind of information, especially when such information would destroy a particular policy. And we should also deliberately, especially in the issue of fact checking, while we are doing the fact checking, we should also deliberately also train up people, train up some social media influencers and gatekeepers okay. that will also take time to deal with some of these issues. Okay. But I think as a citizen, you should imbibe the culture of making sure that first you protect your country and that you are patriotic to your national ideals. Okay, we have a lot of comments coming in. Let's see whether we can quickly take them. I have from uh, Theodore Echo. She said, every day people are being misinformed. We need peace in our country, so misinformation should be minimized. Thumbs up to anyway. Thank you. We have from Mr. Bekimbo Williams. When patriotism guides your conduct, you lose appetite to misinform your followers with such. So let's all take responsibility. Misinformation is dangerous and is deadly. We've talked about that. We have also from a Sabe Hart. She said, in all fake news, misinformation, malformation, disinformation are all wrong ways of spreading information on social media. So to avoid this, we should only spread credible information. After what? Proper checking. That's all what we've been talking about here. And then uh, lastly from Boma Amadi, she says a misinformed citizen is a malformed citizen. Let's endeavor to verify the information we put across to the public. When it comes to you, stop, think, have a rethink, verify before you share it. One last word, sir. Yeah, it is important that people should think critically. Okay. Because that is one thing that is lacking on the social media, uh, on the various social media platforms. Okay. That, and that is what our education. So people should deliberately acquire social media literacy. Okay. And it is important. Oh, okay. And it must be patriotic. The use of social media must be patriotic. Okay. It should be a priority. Okay. And for you, Mr. Ellis? Uh, I want to say that uh, we should avoid misinformation. Okay. If you see anything on social media, find out first. Possibly call the person. If it is a person, call the person and ask him, are you sure of this information? Don't encourage people to say that. If you are the maybe as an administrator of a platform, make sure that you don't encourage it. By the time you talk to people, they post to they post wrong information, maybe hate speech, you remove them from the platform. Okay. Uh, maybe suspend them and bring them back. If they like that platform, they will also check their uh, platforms before, they check their messages before they send them out. Okay. And just like I said before, government should not provide vacuum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should have information so that we depend on it. We will not look for any other information. Yeah. So thank you, viewers, for streaming live with us this morning. I'm sure you have been sensitized on what misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation. Fake speech, fake news, hate speech, and disinformation disorder all go on to incite violence in our society. And today, as an agency, we are saying this morning, Say no to fake news. Say no to hate speech. And from me, it is no to misinformation, no to disinformation, no to malinformation. Thank you again. Keep a date with us next week Friday as we begin a topic titled Deregulation of the Petroleum Downstream sector. You wouldn't want to miss this edition. Again, thank you so much for streaming live with us this morning. This is National Orientation Agency, River State, Nigeria.